If you've been wanting to play a death mage in Elden Ring, but you're worried about struggling with damage in the early game, I'm going to show you how to get completely overpowered with a near max deaths poker and several buffs without fighting a single boss and a selection of several strong sorceries as well for those of you that want to keep some range. I'm going to go step by step and show you every item you need, what those items do, how to get them, where to get them, so even new players should be able to follow along. All that I ask is if this guide helps you, you smash that like button. And if you have questions, you leave them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos like this, then be sure to subscribe. Okay, so this may seem counterintuitive as a mage, but if you want to stat optimize early game and late game, you want to start off as a vagabond. For a keepsake, grab the stone sword key unless you're confident you're not going to miss any of the ones shown in the guide, then you could grab the golden seed, it's up to you. Now as usual when heading to Limgrave, just run up the left side of the tree sentinel, avoid him and head into the church of Ella. Be sure to grab the golden rune too out front before heading in and activating the side of grace. Speak with the merchant Kale and sell that golden rune too that we just picked up for 400 runes. And we're going to use some of those runes to buy a torch. This will help you navigate dark areas like caves, but it's also mandatory for something we're going to be doing later on. Next, just follow the path up and rest at the gate front site of grace. This will trigger the cutscene that will get you access to torrent so you can finally move around a little bit faster. Don't forget to map your spectral steed whistle before moving on. Grab the map fragment at gate front and then jump down the cellar stairs nearby. Open the chest down there and grab the whetstone knife. This will allow you to put ashes of war on your weapons. Now open your map and fast travel back to the church of Ella where you'll find Rena. Go through the dialogue until you get the spirit calling bell and the lone wolf ashes. You can use these during boss fights if you're new to the game. Then head to this cliff, which is just southwest of the first step set of grace where you started out. Because there's a spirit spring here, you can actually jump down here without taking any fall damage. And you're going to come over here and pick up this gold pickle foul foot. When you use this, it increases the runes you get by 30% for 3 minutes. We're actually going to save this for later. Then we're going to go back to the gate front side of grace and we're going to ride southeast to the bridge where we're going to kill this scarab. Using this ash of war will increase the damage of your next hit by 60%. We're going to put it on the halberd at the very next site of grace that we can find, and this will give us all the damage we need early on. Now head southeast and grab the Limgrave East map fragment, and then make your way even further east over to Fort Height. Be sure to rest at the site of grace just in case you die. Grab the golden seed out front and then just run past everything inside of the fort and climb the ladder to the top. If you aggro the knight you don't want to fight him, just quit out at the top of the ladder and then spawn back in. You can also summon your wolves up here to help you in this fight, or you can just use determination and R2s to stance break him. It's not a very hard fight and you have several options here. Now for the reason that we came here, there's a chest with the left half of the Dectus medallion in it. We need both halves of this medallion in order to go up to Altus Plateau later. Now follow the road north from Fort Height until you get to the Third Church of America. Don't forget to pick up the Sacred Tear to reinforce your flasks. And even more importantly, don't forget to pick up the Flask of Wondrous Physic. We'll be picking up two tiers later on to put in here to boost our damage significantly. As with any mage build, I recommend having at least two or three mana flasks available at all times. Next, we're going to head to the small pond just behind the church and use the Waygate. This is going to save us a ton of time and take us to the very northeast side of Kaled. When you spawn in, you're just going to turn around and ride south and grab any sites of grace on your way. I would definitely grab the site of grace before running underneath the dragon on the bridge just in case. If you don't, that'll be the one time something crazy happens. After crossing the bridge, you want to make a left towards Lens Rise and you'll see a graveyard. Be sure to loot all the runes there before using the Spirit Spring to jump down safely. Grab the Site of Grace because there's actually a farm spot here I'm going to show in a minute. Use the Spirit Spring to double jump up on top of Lens Rise. Then go up the stairs and open the chest for a Memory Stone. This will increase the maximum number of spells you can have equipped by one. Now if you're new to the game and you want to put a couple stat points in early, you can ride just down the hill from the Site of Grace here and make this ball fall off the ledge and it'll give you almost 2,000 runes each time you do it, so you can do that to get some early levels if you wanted to. From here, we're going to use that Spirit Spring to jump back up to the graveyard, and then just keep heading west. Then there's another Spirit Spring behind the Minor Erd Tree. We're going to jump up there, and we're going to rest at the Site of Grace for Fort Ferreth. And resting at the Site of Grace is actually going to trigger another cutscene, at which point you'll be given the option to go to the Round Table Hold. And once you do this once, you can travel there via your map at any point that you want to in the future. So after gaining access to the round table, just fast travel back to Fort Ferreth. Now we need something from the top of this fort, but these enemies are actually a little bit tougher. So what we're going to do is just run past everything and go straight up the ladder. You might get poisoned, you might not. It really doesn't matter if you do. Once you get to the top, just open the chest and grab the right half of the Dectus Medallion. And then you can just fast travel back to the Site of Grace to get out of here. And then from the Fort Ferris side of Grace, we're actually going to head west and grab the Dragon Barrow map fragment. 
and then we're going to head even slightly further west to grab the Dragon Barrel west side of Grace. I'm going to show it on the map so that you can orient it to this little tower just to the northeast that we're going to head to. Now when you start to approach this tower, you're going to see a scarab out front that we want to approach from the right side. And we do this so that when we hit it and aggro it, it heads towards the cliff. And if you just keep following it that direction and nudging it, eventually you'll get it all the way to the cliff where you can hit it off. And this just makes it easier and faster since our damage isn't that high yet. But this rewards us with a somber smithing stone 8. And we can actually grab a somber smithing stone 9 just a couple feet away. We just want to get down below where we're currently standing, so we're just going to make our way down this hill and back around. Once we loop back, we're going to make our way to the actual base of the tower. And on the ground in the middle of all these chairs, there's going to be a somber smithing stone 9. So now all we need is 1 through 7. Go back to Fort Ferreth and head south to the Church of the Plague. Be sure not to miss the Sacred Tear here, and it's very important that you grab this Site of Grace while you're here. Now jump down and follow the road south, picking up loot along the way to the southern Aeonia Swamp Bank Site of Grace. And then just south of that Site of Grace on the road is going to be the Kaelid Map Fragment. Then we're going to actually head to the northwestern side of the swamp, to an area called the Street of Sage's Ruins. Now use your determination in combination with the charge attack to make short work of these enemies and pick up the Meteorite Staff right behind them. This is the best early game staff in Elden Ring. It can't be upgraded, so it will get outshined by other staffs later on, but it has the best sorcery scaling early on while you have no intelligence invested. Don't forget to grab the Golden Rune 4 on your way back out. Then you're going to head just east to the building with the stairs down to a cellar. Just run past all the enemies and straight into the cellar, open the chest, and you're going to find Roxling. This is a great early game spell that does a lot of poise damage. And now I show you how to get the Death Poker without even fighting the boss. But first, we want to take a moment to thank War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. You can play War Thunder completely free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using my link in the pinned comment or the description below. New and returning players that haven't played in 6 months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms that includes multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, and 7 days of premium account. To celebrate the new year 2024, all players get 3 exclusive Gaijin Snail decals until the end of January. Elf, Rudolph, and Grinch for use in your vehicle decoration. These are available for a limited time only, be sure not to miss them. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made and is available now for free on PC and consoles. Take command of over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships of 10 major nations, ranging from biplanes and armored cars in the 1920s to the fighter jets and the main battle tanks of today. Immerse yourself in the intense combat of War Thunder where incredibly detailed vehicles, realistic graphics, and authentic sound effects place you right at the helm of the most powerful war machines of our time. Join a worldwide community of over 70 million players in epic PvP battles today and delve into the breathtaking experience that is War Thunder. With an unmatched wealth of high quality content to discover, there's simply no game better suited for fans of military history. I personally enjoy the intricacy of the vehicle modeling to add the next level realism to the game. The fact that the damage is done to things like the engines or the crew adds a ton of detail to the vehicle combat system. And there's a game mode for every type of player. War Thunder offers three distinct game modes, each ramping up the realism progressively. Arcade suits those craving fast-paced matches with enhanced vehicle performance and simplified physics, while simulator mode ditches all the guardrails for the ultimate challenge. Realistic mode, the perfect middle ground, strikes a balance between the intensity and authenticity. However you choose to play, you'll find it here. Time to grab the Death's Poker, the centerpiece of our build. After heading back to the southern Aeonia Swamp Bank site of Grace, you need to wait until nightfall. And when you get up from the site of Grace and look directly east, you're actually going to see the death right bird behind you. So you're going to mount Torrent, you're going to ride over just close enough to aggro him, and then start baiting him towards the cliff. At first you want to bait him towards this smaller route that I go to, and then once you have him near the cliffs, you just want to bait him along the cliffs towards the larger tree root. Once you bait him along the cliff to the larger tree root, you're just going to jump to the other side. And then you're just going to jump off of Torrent and stand directly underneath the tree root. And then it's just as simple as standing here until he jumps off the cliff and dies on his own. You don't even need to swing your weapon during this entire fight. And if his AI is being weird or you mess something up, just go back to the side of Grace, wait till nightfall, and try it again. And with this simple trick done, you get 15,000 runes, and more importantly, you get the Death's Poker. This is one of the strongest weapons in Elden Ring, and now you have it before even fighting your first boss. And we're not even close to done yet. I'm going to get you to level 60 plus with 40 plus intelligence, and we're going to upgrade this weapon almost to max level. So head back to the Church of the Plague and jump down the cliffs to the southwest. Just take your time and be careful because if you jump down too far, you will die from fall damage. Head into Gowry's Shack and he'll ask you to find a certain needle. First, we're going to stop next door in Celia, the town of sorcery. And we're going to jump to the rooftops and light all three of the braziers to break the seals around town. Once you get to the rooftops for the first seal, it's really easy to get to the other two. Be sure to grab the stone sword key on the roof before jumping down after lighting the third one. Now if there's any enemies in your way, just use determination and a jumping R2. But you're looking for this intersection in the very middle of the town. And the seal that was there will be gone now. 
and you'll gain access to this chest which contains a sorcery called Night Comet. Especially early game, this is a very strong general use sorcery, so feel free to use it with your meteorite staff to give you some range while exploring. From the southern Aeonia Swamp Bank side of Grace, we're going to head into the swamp and grab this somber smithing stone 4. And now I'm going to show you how to defeat another really difficult boss without ever swinging your weapon. So while you're mounted, just ride in and start the Commander O'Neill boss fight. Then run to the front of the arena and kind of hang out in this corner while you bait him out. This spot will shield you from the arrows that his summons shoot. Then just slowly keep baiting him out of the arena towards the side of Grace. And you'll see a couple of swamp geysers popping up over here. They're going to pop up in the same place every time, so basically you just want to bait him into them. The initial blast does almost 800 damage, and if he's hit by all the smaller ticks as well, he should be taking over 1200 damage every time you lure him into it. Basically, all you need to do is stay mounted and ride in circles around him. It really trivializes one of the harder fights in the game. Now, if he happens to summon out here, you can just bait them in as well, and it typically only takes one hit for them. You shouldn't have any problem with this fight, especially since he walks so slow. Once he's dead, he'll drop a weapon called the Commander Standard. This weapon has a skill on it called Rallying Standard, and this skill is the best aura buff in Elden Ring. It increases all of your damage by 20% for 30 seconds. You'll also get the Unalloyed Gold Needle to progress Gowrie's questline. All you need to do is go back to Gowrie's shack. He'll ask you for time with the needle, just save and exit, load back in, and then go to the Church of the Plague where Millicent was. Give her the Unalloyed Gold Needle and then rest at the side of Grace to reload the area. She's going to give you a reward, but more importantly, she's going to progress Gowrie's questline so you can go back to him now and purchase spells. I highly recommend that you buy Night Maiden's Mist. This is a great AoE damage over time spell that's really good for cheesing bosses that you have trouble with. Now we're going back to Gatefront and heading up to the Stormhill Shack and grabbing the Stone Sword Key outside. We're going to take the hidden path around the east side of Stormville Castle to skip it for now, and we're going to grab the Sacred Tear in the Church of Irith. Then we're going to head north and grab the map for Lyernia East. And in the ruins just northwest of there, there's a way gate that's going to take us to the South Raya Lucaria Gate. Now when you get there, be sure that you don't forget to interact with the Site of Grace because we're going to be coming back here later. Now you can use this little trick to jump down a lot faster from this Site of Grace. Now from here, head southeast to this point on the map to pick up the map fragment for Lyernia North. And from the map fragment, head north until you see a small gazebo with a way gate inside. This way gate is going to save you a ton of time by transporting you all the way up to Lyernia West. You're going to spawn in directly on the map fragment for Lyernia West. Be sure to grab the road to the manor site of Grace right next to EG. And then speak with EG and he will sell you somber smithing stones 1, 2, 3, and 4. You should have plenty of runes right now. Just purchase whichever smithing stones you're missing. For me, that was 2 and 3. Now, while we still have some extra runes, we're going to upgrade our death poker all the way to plus 4. And even at plus 4, this weapon's incredibly strong. But we're going to level it up a lot more here in a second. Now from the side of Grace, just loop down along the cliffs until you get to a low enough point that you can jump without taking too much fall damage. Then you're going to snatch and run with the Intelligence Knock Crystal tier. This extra 10 intelligence will give us even more early game damage with weapon and spell scaling. Now we're going to spend the rest of our runes to get 15 strength, 17 dexterity, and 11 intelligence. And these are the base stats needed to equip our death's poker, so we're going to be using that from here on out. Keep following the road to the manor north and then eventually east until you can jump across to the Bellum Church. Grab the Bellum Church side of Grace as a checkpoint, and then be sure that you don't forget to pick up the Sacred Tear in the back side of the church as well. Keep following the Bellum Highway north while dodging any incoming threats. Grab the side of Grace for the Grand Lift of Dectus because we're going to be coming back here later on. Now move forward and present the completed Dectus medallion to use the Grand Lift of Dectus and reach the Altus Plateau. Grab the Altus Plateau map fragment as well as the Lindell Royal Capital map fragment. At this point, you're going to head to the Bower of Bounty side of Grace. This is in the center of the north part of the Altus Plateau. You should see three worm face enemies walking around a scarab. We might as well go ahead and throw in our intelligence knot tier and start using that. These enemies are really dangerous with death blight, so all we're going to do is ride by and hit the scarab to scare it the other direction. We're going to bait the worm faces towards us and then ride past them back the other direction and finish off the scarab. This allows you to get the somber smithing stone 5 without having to actually fight anything. So now all we need is a somber smithing stone 6 and 7. If you follow the road along the north side of Altus Plateau west, it'll lead you to Mount Gelmir via this bridge. Then you're going to climb this ladder next to the bridge to get to the first Mount Gelmir campsite site of Grace. And as usual, anytime we see a graveyard, we're going to loot all the runes. When you're finished looting, kill the wolf next to the chair on the opposite end of the graveyard. And then loot the body in the chair for a somber smithing stone 6. Now we're heading back to Limgrave and heading south to the Weeping Peninsula via the bridge. And we're going to grab the stone sword key on the way. 
To get a fast travel point, we're going to grab the Castlemorn Rampart side of Grace on our way to getting the Weeping Peninsula map fragment. Then you have to loop all the way around to the southwest part of the Weeping Peninsula to the 4th Church of America. Be sure to grab both the Site of Grace and the Sacred Tear before heading out of the church and heading southeast. And just keep heading southeast up the hill towards the Tower of Return, just dodging the enemies at the base of the tower. Climb to the top of the tower and dispatch the lone enemy at the top. And then open up the chest, which is actually a transporter trap that's going to take you to the Royal Capital. Now you're going to spawn in this closed off part of the Royal Capital and you won't have access to the rest of it. But we can do what's called a wrong warp and it works on PC and console. Just rest at the site of grace, then open your map and travel to the table of lost grace. The trick here is once you click travel, you need to force quit Elden Ring the second that the loading bar on the bottom hits 100%. Now if you timed it correctly, you're going to show up at the first area of the royal capital. Before you do anything else, you need to go inside the room to your right and hit the site of grace. Otherwise, if you die, you won't spawn back here. Now, you don't have to fight a single enemy here. You're just going to run past everything on the path that I'm showing now. Jumping down to the rooftop seems to be the fastest and safest way to get through here. The goal here is to reach and activate the Avenue Balcony Site of Grace. Once you reach the Site of Grace, you're going to head down the stairs, jump over the railing on the left, jump off the rooftops down into this well, then you're going to follow my path to the next Site of Grace. The only enemies along this path are going to be a couple of rats, but if you're quick, they shouldn't bother you. Since you can't take damage while you're in the animation of opening a door, all you need to worry about is rolling forward as soon as you finish the door opening animation. From here, just jump down the ladder and rest at the underground roadside site of Grace. This gives you a very close checkpoint should you die during this next part. Just head out the door, go left, and then jump down the ladder on your right. Run past the enemies up this pipe and jump down where it levels off. Wait for the giant crayfish to walk forward a little bit and then jump down onto the item below. This is a somber smithing stone 7 and it's the last somber smithing stone we need. We can now take our death's poker to plus 9 which is 1 level from max. To get out of here, just pull your map up and fast travel before anything aggros you. Go back to the blacksmith in the round table hold. You're going to sell all of your golden runes to cash out as many runes as you can to level up your weapon. And you're going to level the death's poker all the way to plus 9. Most importantly, this is going to increase the damage of the ghost flame ignition skill by an incredible amount. We can now use that skill to go one-shot bosses and level up extremely quick. The first thing I'm going to do is show you this incredible leveling technique that I came up with for this build. Go ahead and equip your Gold Pickle Foulfoot, which remember lasts for 3 minutes and gives you 30% more runes. And then move your torch to a slot on the same hand as your Death's Poker. And remember, your Death's Poker does magic damage, but it does a ton of Frostbite buildup. And we can use the torch to reset that Frostbite buildup. So starting at the Fort Ferret side of Grace, you're going to use your Gold Pickle Foulfoot and drink your flask. And I know a lot of you have seen the dragon dupe glitch, but you haven't seen it done like this. So we're gonna do a ghost flame ignition with an L2 followed by an R1. This immediately procs a 10,000 damage frostbite that we can reset with the fire damage from the torch. And then we can just keep repeating this process over and over extremely quickly. So you could get three frostbites off with over 34,000 damage before you run out of FP and need to use your flask of cerulean tears. So then you get three more rotations off for three more frostbites and 34,000 more damage before you need to use your Flask of Cerulean Tears again. Then after your second flask, you're going to do one normal rotation, and then on the second rotation, you only need to hit L2, you don't need to follow up with an R1 to finish the last Frostbite needed. So after hitting L2, you need to immediately get on your horse and start heading back to the Site of Grace so that you can get there before the dragon dies. As you saw there on rotation 8, I only did an L2 and then immediately got on the horse, I did not follow up with the R1. So then you need to get back to the Site of Grace immediately because if the dragon dies before you do, it'll be gone forever. But as you can see, if you're fast enough, the dragon will still be there and you get the 65,000 runes, which is 50,000 flat runes plus the 30% bonus from the Gold Pickle Foulfoot. Now since the Gold Pickle Foulfoot lasts for 3 minutes, if you're quick, you can easily get a second run in as I show here and still have the Gold Pickle Foulfoot active. I did 8 runs in under 10 minutes, averaging about a minute and 5 seconds per run. So I was averaging about 60,000 runes per minute. This means you can go all the way to level 60 in under 10 minutes. I'd recommend going to at least about 25 Vigor. You can throw a couple into Mind if you want to. I would aim for a minimum of 40 Intelligence since that's our main damage stat. And I actually pushed Faith to 12 here because I was testing a Sorcery for the endgame version of this build. You could also farm a lot less or farm a lot more if you wanted to be even stronger. It's really up to you here. This is more or less a loose guide on which stats to prioritize. Which again, Vigor, a little bit of Mind, and mostly Intelligence is where I'd be. So now from the South Rea Lucaria Gate, we're going to jump back down and wrap around under the Academy. And you're going to need two Stone Sword Keys in order to get into the Academy Crystal Cave. 
And this is an optional but recommended boss fight. If you're new to the game and this is just giving you too much trouble, don't worry about this. It's not mandatory. Now, because I was testing that spell that required those couple extra points of faith, I forgot to put one more point into strength. You need 16 strength to two-hand the commander standard for the rallying standard buff. Also, be sure to have rock sling equipped when you head into this boss fight. Now, before heading into this boss fight, you're going to use your flask and rallying standard. Then you're going to drink a mana flask and unequip the commander standard so you can still medium roll. Then you're going to keep your distance and you're going to cast three rock slings in a row. If you get too close, one of the three projectiles is going to miss so they won't all three connect and you will not break their stance in three casts. But if you do it right and all of them connect, after three casts, they'll be stance broken and you want to immediately run up and hit a critical and then you're going to follow that up with a charged R2 attack. If you do it correct, you'll have the first one dead before the second one even realizes what's going on. Then you want to roll away and create that distance again and drink a flask of cerulean tears. And then you're going to just repeat the same process again, keeping your distance, cast three rock slings, and then follow up with a critical and a charged R2. If you're new to the game, the stance breaking part is actually very important with this boss, because these bosses take 90% less damage from everything until their stance is broken. At which point, as you can see, you'll do regular damage, and with a plus 9 death poker, that damage is extraordinary. Now, we don't really care so much about the crystal release spell reward, what we're after is actually up top, so we're going to go and take the elevator up and open the chest at the top. And inside that chest is a spell called Terra Magica. And this spell places a blue glyph on the ground below your feet. And while you're standing within it, you will do 35% more magic damage. And though it looks like fire, Ghost Slim Ignition is actually magic damage. Another strategy to try if you're struggling with the first one is to use your wolves to distract and then constantly cast Night Maiden's Mist. As you can see, the spell bypasses their resistance and absolutely melts them. Now we're going to fast travel back to the Grand Lift Adductus Waypoint, and we're going to ride due south to the Mausoleum Compound, but feel free to take out this annoying Frenzy Flame Tower on your way. And for the Urtree Avatar here, we're going to use the same buff routine as last time with our Flask and our Rallying Standard, but this time we're also going to add Terra Magica to the end of the buff routine, and this boss actually has some magic resistance, but it's still not going to be enough to stop it from getting one shot. So our damage is looking really good, but it's actually about to go up significantly again because this boss drops the Magic Shrouding Crack tier. So we can actually throw this in our flask with our Intelligence Knot tier, and this will increase all of our magic damage by another 20% multiplicatively. So that means we're ready for our first official boss fight. We're going to use the exact same buff routine for Margit. We're going to use our flask, followed up by the Rallying Standard. Then we're going to use a Mana Flask and unequip the Commander Standard so that we can still medium roll. Then we're going to start the fight, we're going to skip the cutscene, and we're going to put Terra Magica on the ground at our feet. And for Margit, we want to bait his jumping attack because he has a slow recovery, and then we're going to send it. A big thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using my link in the pinned comment or the description below. And remember, if you're new or returning after not playing for six months, you'll receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms, including multiple premium vehicles and more. Through the end of January, all players will also get three exclusive and festive Gaijin Snail decals. Be sure not to miss this limited time bonus. Alright guys, thanks again for watching. Be sure to leave the questions in the comments below. Smash the like button if it helped you, and sub if you want to see more. Huge shout out to the patrons, thank you guys so much, and keep an eye out over on Patreon. The written PDF checklist version of this guide will be up on Patreon later today. Stay dangerous.